right? And I was looking for uh, Romans before Corinthians, because that's how it's in the Bible. <laughs> Not realizing that that was CNR, sorry. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we come before thee in the name of Jesus. We are thankful for this morning and a blessing upon us. Father, we ask you that you may work in our hearts today. And as we sing, or we preach your word, or we listen to your word, or we, or we pray that we may do it in Jesus' name and for the glory and the sake of the Father and salvation of sinners. Father, dwell in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, lead us to walk away from our sins. Say no to our, our fleshly desires. And may we say yes to Jesus Christ. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans 8:28. It's a very well-known verse of scriptures. You may have it at home on a, on a, on a, hanging on the wall, something with it, or you may have it on a t-shirt or on, on a coffee mug. Very well-known. And it says, We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. You may be seated. Uh, the sermon today is going to be between verse 28 and 30, so we have to leave the text in the context. But as I said before, we always think about this, and uh, our message is all things are for the good. And we always think about this, and we see this Bible verse all over. However, a lot of times, people misinterpret what it means and why it's written in the scriptures. Um, and because we are studying Romans 8, the whole text, I think it will be easy for us to live it in the context of the Holy Scriptures, and it will be uh, easy understanding. Amen? But let's sing to the Lord. You want to sing to the Lord? Who wants to sing to the Lord? Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's sing to the Lord. So please stand and let's sing to the Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Amen. Oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee, amen. That him talks about our God that he doesn't change. We change, but he doesn't. And that gives the assurance of our salvation, amen. Yes, we pay the bill, so we have lights. <laughs>
blessings all mine with ten thousand besides. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Whatever we need, he always provided. Amen. Sometimes we don't know, but he was there. We just didn't see it. And our faith was too weak, but he was always taking care of the ones who truly love him. Amen. You deserve the glory and the honor. Only him. Amen. deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, I lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the worship as we lift your holy name for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no the glory and the honor Lord we lift my hands and worship as we lift your holy name you deserve the glory and the honor God we are asking one player to worship you Lord, we lift our hands and worship as we lift your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. be seated amen as um as i said before we're gonna we're gonna uh, the text today is all things are for the good and again romans 8 28 is a verse very well known from scriptures and a lot of times people think of this verse um a little bit out of the context a lot of people think well once that i'm in christ now and all the things are for the good means my life will be wonderful everything will be perfect i'll have no problems and that's not exactly what the text says. So what happened is, um, when, we, um, when we leave the text in the context and we learn from the text, we will understand the meaning of it. You know, you will have trouble. And if you are in Christ, you know that. You'll have trouble. And uh, you don't have to be a, a Christian for a long time to understand how difficult it is for you to fight sin. The worldly ideas. How hard it is for you to remain 
Um, the way God wants it to be, holy as is holy, on the world that is full of sin and is such a deceiving, with such a de deceiving philosophies. Amen? So please open your Bible in Romans 8, verse 28 to 30. Let's read the whole text and let's learn from it. I hope you read the, the devotional that was sent out that it talks, speaks about this true. So please, as you find the scripture, please stand and we'll read God's word together. You have a Bible in front of you. If you don't find it, if you don't, I'm sorry, if you don't have one, you can use your uh, phone yeah. and that will work too. Just make sure you keep on the Bible app. Amen. So Romans 8, verse 26 to, to, to uh, I'm sorry, Romans 8, verse 28 to 30. And he says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God for new, he also predestinated to, the, to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the first firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he, he predestinated, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Father, we come before thee in the name of Jesus. By the mercy of your great name, we ask you, Lord, help us to understand scriptures. May your name be glorified in our lives as we go verse by verse learning what you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. And uh, look at the text. And um, um, it is, I, I love this translation of the Bible that we've been using uh, lately. And uh, since we changed, um, I, um, I really find it easier to understand. And some terminology and some it, it's so clear and on this text particularly on this verse on the 28 that is so many times misinterpreted I think it's very clear on this version when it says and we know all that in all things God works for the good of those who love him the first word that I want to call your attention or the first expression that I want to call your attention is and we know so if you were here on Wednesday, you hear me saying this, that uh, uh, the, the God and the Apostle Paul on 1 Corinthians um, uh, 15, the, 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 the verse 1, from verse 1 to 4, where we study on, on Wednesdays, he calls our attention and he reminds us of the gospel. So Paul writing to the Corinthians, want to remind them of the gospel they already know and they have been believed. Amen? Remember this? So look what he says here now. He says, and we know. So he, he, Paul is not going to say nothing new. Something that I already know and he wants to remind them. We, be, we need to be reminded from the truth of God over and over again. And that's why, why, why we come to church on, on Sundays, on Wednesdays, on, on Fridays. And every time we can. And we read the Bible every day. And we hear to, to God's word being preached a lot of times because we need to be reminded all the time of the true of God. And the other thing is that it's very important for us to know that when we stand on this pulpit, we, not, we don't want to bring you something new. I don't, want to, I, I don't want to bring a new message or something that you never heard before and you're going to be so marveled with that. That's sort of, wow! That was like, something new was great. No, no, no that's, not the, that's not how it works. We are bringing over and over the same true of God that has 2,000 years and it doesn't change. But we change. We turn to him. We hear the gospel once again. And one more time, God does something and he keeps continually working in our lives. Amen? So you're not expecting anything new. Never expect anything new when you come to church. Expect the same word of God being preached over and over again. And it's been preached like this for 2,000 years. For the glory and the sake of Christ alone. Why? Because God did not wait for me to born to give me something, reveal me something that he never revealed before. I'm not that special. I'm not special at all. It's nothing special about me. If you, if you have any doubt on that, ask my wife. It's nothing special. A regular man, a simple man. But we know, and some, of, some are looking to you, right? so they're going to ask you after. So what, 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 what happened is we, we, receive, we, we learn from God's word and we proclaim the same truth because he is God. He is the only star in service. He is the only star in our lives. He is to him be the glory forever. Amen. 
So going back to the text, and we know, so we know already this, and what it is, what do we know? Look to the text, that in all things God works for the good of those who believe in Him. For the ones who believe in Him, all things that happen, all, thi all, all things in life, they work for the good. So it's not everything's going to be good, is everything work, God works for the good. So we understand the sovereignty of God. We know God is sovereign. We know in everything that happened, God is aware. Like last night, night was a storm, right? Some places I was driving here and I saw so many pieces of trees, uh, uh, branches on, on the street. It was like, wow. What do you think? God fell asleep and he, he, he forgot. And he woke up this morning and he said, oh, look what has just happened. No. He's sovereign God. He's all over. He knows all things. Nothing happened that he doesn't know. And nothing happened out of his control. We believe in the sovereignty of God. So he says, we know that in, that in all things God works. He is in all things. Now, for the believer, for the saved, look what he says. For those who love him, all things work for the good. So be careful how you apply this text to start. Let's start right there. Don't go out there and tell everybody. That all things that happens in their lives is for the good. No, it's, it's for the good for the believers. It's for the good that ones have been called according to his purpose. Look what it says. Who have been called, called according to his purpose. The ones that have been called to salvation. All things that happens in their lives are for the good. So, meaning, when you, you are struggle with, uh, like you get sick or... Uh, um, if you have trouble at work, uh, or uh, you face traffic, or you get a flat tire, all those things, God is working through them for your own good. Well, that's hard to take, isn't it? It's easier to take other things, right? The things that we like, the things that we enjoy, and we say, yes, God worked on this thing for my own good. What are we thinking? We're thinking about uh, on an earthly perspective. For the life here. But that's not how God sees things. Meaning that God that loved you. That he sent his son to die on a cross for your sins. That, that redeemed you. That gave you a new life. The, through the same one that you have eternal life. Because he resurrected from the dead. All the things that comes to your life. According to uh, uh, all the things that comes, uh, come to your life. That God is working through them according to his purpose. He wants to make you a better Christian. A better, a, a, more, a more godly person. To the image of his own son. And that's what it says in verse 29. So when troubles and tribulations come to our life. It's so hard for us to think that God has a purpose on it, isn't it? It's so hard. So we have these new ideas, which only, only has a, a few decades, which the Christian, the, 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 the Christian person shouldn't suffer, right? We, should, we shouldn't suffer. We, we, we are not called to be suffer, to suffer. We call to, to be victorious. So we shouldn't have any problems. And when problems come to our life, that's the devil. And we've got to rebuke and cast away and reject. I hear people saying, I do not accept this kind of pain or suffering because that's not what God wants. God doesn't want me to suffer, so I'll, take, I'll cast it away because all things are for the good, so all things have to be good. That's not what the text says. That's totally not what the text says. He says that God works it through all things. Meaning, when you are in pain, or you are in suffering, or you are facing a problem, and you may be suffering, you may be facing a problem right now. You may have come here today in, in a lot of pain, or in a lot of suffering with troubles and struggles in your life, or you, if you, you maybe you are watching online, and that's your case. Understand, if God called you according to His purpose, if God saved your soul, all those things that happen in your life, even if you don't understand, they are, and they are working for your own good. They're gonna. God is making you more like Christ. Now that is interesting enough that when I came to this country I, I, I came across an expression that says whatever doesn't kill you make you strong. And, and the first time I hear that I was like okay uh, how's that? And, and that's a saying that we have and, and on a sense it's very very true right? On a sense it is. Like 
if you go through some kind of difficulty, it kind of builds up who, who you are, and you probably will be uh, stronger to face other things. Am I right? So it is true. It is true in life. But, but for an unbeliever, it stops right there. For an unbeliever, that's it. Please understand this. If you are a non-believer, you, you, you need to turn to Christ for your life to have a different meaning. But if you are a believer, a believer, you know that God has a purpose, a higher purpose, and that purpose it's holiness. It's make you look like more, make you look more like Jesus. It's His name being glorified in your life. It's be, that's why you find in the Bible over and over again from Genesis to Revelation, be holy, be holy, be holy. Be, be holy because I'm God, I'm, I'm, I'm the holy God. And always we go and to that. And what was the purpose? And I find this so much on the youth. They, they want to know what God's purpose, what is God's purpose for their lives? God called me for what? What am I supposed to be? What God wants me to be? And when it gets to some age, they want to know who they should marry, right? And so the pastor must have the answer. And sometimes we tempt, right? Because we look to that person and say, you know what? I think maybe this is going to connect. And we come up with things, right? And if somebody comes to a pastor and says, they say, I don't know what I should do in college. We send them to the seminary. Because we think should, everybody should be a pastor, right? And it's not true. That's not the call. But everybody has been called to be holy. That's the call. So who should you marry? To the person that is going to make you look a little more like Jesus. Think about it. Through difficulties and through lovely times. That's why we say, both to the end. <coughs> so that's what we've been called. What kind of job you should have? The job that will going to make you more like Jesus. What kind of what, 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 what kind of things you should do in life? Things that bring you closer, that draws you closer to God. That, that's easy. You don't have to come up with a lot of uh, ideas. You don't have to put a lot of effort to try to find out things. It's on the simple things every day in everything that happens. God is working for the good, the ones that love Him. It, it, it's so simple in, in, in everything. So he, he, he allows things to happen to us he, by sovereign power that shapes us and makes us look a lot more like Jesus Christ. And a lot of times, a lot of times, is through suffering, is on difficulties. That's what the Bible says. That's what the verse means. The ones that have been called according to his purpose. The ones that are saved so brother and sister if you are going through a difficulty right now and you are going on to a hard time and you don't know you don't know it looks like and a lot of times it probably happened to you you think like oh god for it's just god forgot me i i'm not there look what happened why this is going through understand that in all those things god that loves you to the point that sends his son to die on a cross in your place is the one that is shaping you and I give an example on the Portuguese service, which I think works very well. It's on my mind all the time. Every time I say this, it comes in, into my mind. There is that idea about the, the cooking bread, right? And if you cook bread, you know that we have a, a family tradition at home. It's called the bread on, on, on the red pan. And, and, and Sonia cooks a bread very wonderful on the red pan that we love. And, and she puts the, the pan in the oven, right? The pan. pan. That's how we say In the oven. And a lot of times it looks it looks so nice inside, like uh, outside, and you think it is. But it, it, if you don't let it be inside the oven for long enough, when you cut it, right in the middle, is not cooked, right? So it's rot. So you you can't use it, right? Because it's not perfectly cooked. Now I want you to think about the bread. If the bread had legs, right, and it's sitting there, because my imagination can go. You have no idea. So imagine a bread with legs, right, and it's inside, and it starts getting too hot, and it goes like. Well, it's too hot. I got to get out of here. And he jumps out of the oven. When we're going to cut it, it's no use. It's not good. A lot of times we are facing tribulations and difficulties. It's like that. God just put us in the oven and he needs to cook a little more. So his name can be glorified much, much more. But we want to get out of there. We're just like, can I just go, Lord, Lord, 
What are you doing with me? I'm your servant. And it's nothing wrong that you ask, Lord, what is happening? But ask, Lord, what do I have to learn? Well, how this is coming for the good, how this is going to turn me more like Jesus, how this is going to shape my life and the glory of your holy name will be shown and revealed to the people around me. Why am I on this situation and what, how this will contribute for the glory of your name? So let, let it cook a little more. Don't, don't try to get out of the oven if you're not ready. And God is the one who says it's time. Now you're going to show the world and your neighbors and your family, your home, your church, how I am your God and your Lord. So all things are for the good. But let God decide how it is and accept his will. And remember, you say like, uh, Pastor, you must be out of your mind because there are things that are so difficult, I can't. I'm glad you say that. You said that. Because you can't. You can't take the work of God in your life and now he wants to shape you. That's why you, have the, you are the dwelling of the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit in you. Because you can't. You will never be able and capable to take this but you have the Holy Spirit. And a lot of times we forget about that, right? We go like, Lord, I can't do it anymore. Of course you cannot in yourself, but that's why he gave us his spirit. And this gave his spirit, it's something that we're just studying on the, on, on the same chapter that we are still in today. On Romans 8, the Bible says, the, the Lord of God on this same chapter said that he gave us his spirit, that he cry out to us. Remember last week? He cry out through us and in us. So that's why we can, and all the things are for the good. And we don't, even that we don't see it, we, even we, we'll never know, we will never know why we let a God shape us. Remember Job? So much suffering, so much difficulties. Why, why, why? And there is a point that he says, because I know my Redeemer lives. I know. He, he, he knew before, yes, but on that moment... Of difficulty, he was able to cry out and say, I know my Redeemer lives. And this is so amazing and so important. He was shaped, even though that, of course, God is a whole scenario around that and all the conversation about why Job is following you, Lord, and, and that Satan said, all of that, but still, he knew, and his faith grew. And we need. God to help us and, and, and make us more like Jesus. And this is what we want, right? You want to be more like Jesus. And how do you think you're going to be looking more like Jesus? We don't even know how you look like, right? Physically speaking. They paint so many different things, right? How Jesus is supposed to look like. A lot of them makes no sense whatsoever. Blue eyes. I don't think so. Not on that part of the world. I don't think so. Well, blonde? I don't think so either. But we don't know. But they make these pictures. If you want to look a little more like Jesus, what do you mean? Yeah, we look, you know, God wants you to look more like Jesus in holiness. The one that never sinned. That lived the perfect life. And God was glorifying him. So we know that in all things God works for the good to those who love him. Let's stop here. Do you love him? What that means? What it means do you love him? Did you understand that on today's days, love came up so used on such a wrong way? Every time you pass by and it says love is love, probably the message is wrong and it's nothing to do with love. Because the love comes from the Lord. And the Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. So no, now it means you love God is a response because he loves us first, right? I'm, I'm, I'm quoting scriptures right here, straight scriptures. The Bible says you love me because you, you love God because God loves you first, right? So he loves us first. He loves us to the point to send his son. Now we respond him when in love to him. And that is clear for the obedience of the commandments. We have a desire to obey God. So we pray Make me more like you. I want to be like Jesus. 
How does God do that? Having everything that happens in our life, every single thing, work for that good, for that purpose. He works everything. Do you understand when you get the PSENG bill? And if you're not in the state of New Jersey, if you're watching online, you're not in the state of New Jersey, it's one of our struggles here is the PSENG bill, which is the utility bill. When you receive the PSENG, PS, PSENG bill, and your neighbor that is an unbeliever receives a PS, PSENG bill, it has two different purposes. For them, for the non-believer, you just have to pay the bill. For you, it's something that came in the mail that's going to work for the good of your faith. You're going to pay the bill the same. You may even have to pay a higher bill, I don't know, or a lower bill, I don't know, depends how much you use. But God used even that to work in your own good. How? Ask him. Ask him. Deal with that. You go put gas in your car, the price is high, God is working for the good. You don't know how. A lot of things we don't know. But by faith, we believe in him. We believe in his word. And if it's for the good, it's for the good. So you go to work. You deal with problems. You deal with difficulties. You got traffic on the road. Everybody's upset with traffic. Everybody's yelling and screaming and honking to the person next. This Wednesday was, was unbelievable. We went out to put the flyers. And Tiago was driving the car before. He has the key on his pocket, right? And he walked out of the car. And now I am driving. He walks out of the car with the key in his pocket. The right, so the, let me go back. So the, the, the light was red. And I said, you guys want to leave now? They go, Quick, quickly, get out of the car. I opened the doors. They get out of the car. Oh, Danny, Pedro, and Lily, and Tiago. And Tiago took the key with him on his pocket, right? I rushed them out. As soon as he got out, the light turns green, and my car blocked. There's no key inside. You should see people honking. They were mad. I was like, you got Tiago, Tiago, can you bring the key back? He ran, he ran, he threw the key in the car, almost, he fell in. No, I didn't get to this. He just fell in, and I just was able to put the car to, to, to go and, and go. He said, everybody's mad. When something like this happened, you, you don't know exactly how, but you don't get mad. For the person in front of you on the traffic light, please pay attention to this. Don't, don't, you don't yell to the person in front of you. Because you understand on that moment, somehow, God is working in your, maybe in your patient. We need to be work so much in your patient, especially if we drive in New Jersey. Do you notice? It's not, it's not so crazy how people drive in New Jersey. It's not so, like, why everybody's mad? They start the car mad. And now they don't even have to turn the key anymore. They just press the button because there's no, no key to turn. Right? And they're still mad. Because we're all very upset. We don't have to do it. It's just press. It's still mad. No, it doesn't help. You have electrical windows. So you don't have to roll it anymore. Who remembers that? Oh, oh it's a few of my age. Great. You used to do this. You don't have. You just press. And people are still mad. Does a Christian is mad in traffic? No. Oh, but well, this is a good time to pray. Now I have time to pray. Maybe you leave your house and says, Lord, I can't pray because I don't have time today, okay? I will pray later. And then you get stuck in traffic. Oh, you have time to pray? Oh, praise the Lord. Now you have time. And that's how a Christian, I'm giving you simple examples of your life where, as God is working for the good. Maybe it's time for you to stop and, and just sing a song to the Lord. There's no reason to be mad. There's no reason. Because you know all those things work for the good. Maybe it's God working for the good and next day you're going to get up a little, a little earlier. Maybe. Because God is keep teaching us and we take each moment of our life as a learning experience. As God is purifying us and, and, and make us more like His Son. For those... And look who's that for. Again, this is for the ones who love the Lord. This is for the ones that are saved. The ones that have been called according to His purpose. Because it's one of the things that gets me really upset. Like, upset. Not mad. Upset. Is when I'm talking with people that believe they were saved to be sitting on a, 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 a bench on, on a Sunday morning. No, no. God did not save you to be sitting there doing nothing. 
uh, come out, come back Sunday after Sunday and nothing is happening in your life? One year passed, then the second year passed. Are you telling me that God saved you with no purpose? Well, the only purpose for you to be in heaven? He's not going to do anything in your life today? No, I don't believe that. That's not true. Open the scriptures and read the gospels. The four gospels. And every time he says Jesus walked through or Jesus stopped or Jesus went, you will see something powerful happening right after. Is it a miracle or a teaching or, or something will go, gonna happen? And he saved you for nothing, just to hold on to it. Jesus saved you, gave you salvation, said, okay, hold on to it. One day you will need it when you go to eternity. I don't think so. That's not scriptures. That's why he keeps working on us. He keeps changing us. He keeps he, he keep, uh, 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 bringing us more and shaping us more like Christ. Because he has a purpose. The purpose that his name is going to be glorifying us. We're going to show the world who Jesus is. By our actions, by our reactions, in our words. That's why we want to reach the town of Montclair. Do you understand that we want to reach the town of Montclair? Using the movie because we want the people to be saved. I know a lot of those people that we are giving flyers out there, they come into our church. And that's what we want, right? But he, he brings problems. He brings difficulties, right? You know that, right? But you want that to happen because you want to see the kingdom of God grow? Am I right? We want to see more people praising the name of Jesus. We want to have more people that glorifies and live for the gospel. So God is shaping us. He's working on us. You want to empower you with the Holy Spirit so you go out and you proclaim and you talk about Jesus with all your heart and soul, with passion, because He's working on you. He's, you know all things works for the, uh, you, know, you know all things God works for the good. So you go out and you know that God is working on you. So you're going to express your faith with, with passion. One of the things that I can't stand also is, is these people, they try to. To, to, to preach the gospel or teach the gospel and they're not even sure about what they say and they go like, well, do you know it's something that I want to tell you and I go like, well, do you going to tell me or do you know or you don't know or, or preaching the gospel like this I think do you think what it is in my perspective in your perspective, I don't care about your perspective. I want to hear God's word. I don't know that the other one went on, on, on a letter king, right? And they asked him, you, you think somebody can be saved without Jesus Christ? He said, I don't know. And he came mocking on, like everybody's mocking him now. He called himself a preacher of the gospel. I don't know. No, I do know. I know Jesus is my savior. I know we saved sinners. It saved sinners. I know I'm going to live with him forever. I know all things that happen in my life work for the good. He's shaping me. He's working in me. And I know we'll be like this until the end of times. And I want to just to ask you really quick. Open your Bible if you can or listen. Philippi Philippians, Philippi Philippi Philippians 1 6. Philippians 1 6 says, Being confident of this. That he who, been, who began a good work in you will carry it on to, on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Look what he says. Being confident. I'm confident of this. Paul is saying be confident to, to tell the church. Be assured of this. That he who, who began a good work in you, who began the good work? God. Through the salvation that only can be found in Christ Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit that He brought to our our to us a clear understanding. He that began the good work in you will carry it on to complete uh, completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Let me tell you how some people see this verse. Well, looks like I'm a work in progress, right? Because he started the good work, but he still didn't finish. Am I right? So I'm a work in progress. And that's why you see some failures in me. Yeah, I, I, I don't, it doesn't look like this is what he means. He, he, that's what he says in the text. A lot of people look to this text and say, well, 
That's why sometimes I do things that are wrong because God is still working in me. Well, when he, I don't see it this way. The one that starts the good work. Whether you do renovations at home, right? You do renovations at home. We did renovations here, remember? We did renovations in here. And we say, pardon for my appearance, right? You know that? That, that sign that you see multiple places, pardon for our appearance. Well, we are hoping that job to be complete and to look like it looks a lot better. Well, there's a TV show for that, right? The AGTV. They have the flip. What do you call the, the the houses, they, they turn around. Yeah, so they, 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 they show the house and then they change it. And the people get there, they go like, oh, it's so wonderful. Am I right? You know what I'm talking about? So the work, they did some work on it and now it looks a lot better. Understand that. God is working your life to make you look a lot better for the glory of his name, of course. So... He start the work. You gotta see some progress there. Do you see some progress in your life? Do you see something that God is doing through all this affliction and, and difficulties that comes to your life, and also through all those good times and enjoyable and refreshing times that you have? Because God gives us both, and in all these things, He works for the good. So you gotta see some progress. He start the good work, and it's gonna be completed by the, for the day of Jesus Christ. What is that? The returning of the Lord, or the day that you will die and you will be. In his presence forever. So God is working. It's a process. But something got to show. When we start doing the renovation. And we start posting pictures on that huge album on Facebook. Right? That's huge. So you'll see. Right? There was one color here. Remember? And then when we paint. We took a couple of pictures. It looks a little more bright. Right? And then this needs to be fixed. And then the other thing. Remember? And then we paint blue. The walls. Remember? Now we... We change the, the size of the pulpit. All those renovations, you expect to start seeing progress, right? It's getting somewhere. It's well, going somewhere. That's what it means. It's not an excuse for my uh, pardon for my appearance. It's not that. That's not the meaning of the text. It means, look what's happening in my life. I can see Christ working in my life. He did not stop working. He still works in my life today. So it means I have been called, verse 29, for those God for new, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. And, and we like election, right? We like, we like to talk about that. I've been elected. I'm predestinated for salvation. God called me. And we believe that. It's, right, that's not, a, obviously, it's the right of the text. It's not a suggestion. He called the ones, he, he, he died for the ones that he called to be saved. It's very clear in scriptures. It's very clear. But those that he predestinate, he predestinate them to be conformed to the image of his son. Nothing less. Nothing less. Nothing more, because you can be more than you can not be better than Christ. But nothing less. He predestinated us to be conformed to the image of his son. He called us to be like Jesus. That's your goal in life. You gotta be like Jesus. That he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. So he is the firstborn, the firstborn born among many brothers and sisters. So it means, remember a couple of weeks ago we spoke about this? Be brothers and sisters of Christ and how difficult of Jesus and how difficult is that for, to, for our, our understanding. But we also sp spoke a couple of weeks ago in the same Romans 8. This is only Romans 8. That's why it's so good that we stay in the same chapter and have a, a better understanding of the whole chapter. We also spoke in, Ro in Romans 8 that by his spirit, we call Abba Father. Remember? We call Abba Father. So, the same Abba Father than the Son, Jesus Christ, which is the firstborn. We're not like him. We're not him, but we, go, we have to look like him. He calls us to be, he's the firstborn, and we are, there is uh, many brothers and sisters, which is all those that through the years have been called, predestinated to be saved and being called by his name. Now, how do you know you're saved? How do you know you've been predestinated to salvation? It's by the work that he continually do, that, is, that he is continually doing in your life. It's how the things that happen in your life are working you and shaping you and making you look more like Christ. Your vocabulary change. Your way to act change. And that's why I'm saying, always say, don't evaluate your salvation not from 
10 years ago and today, but from yesterday to today. How is God still working in your life? What is God doing in your life today? How, what, what is he shaping you on? What's happening? What's happening? And those he predestinated, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. So, for those that was predestinated, he called. So, before, before even the world existed, he knew all things. He knew that, that Jesus will come. He knows the one he was called, that he called to believe in him. And, and, and they came to him. And they were justified. Meaning, they no longer, uh, uh, even though they, they deserve the condemnation, they have been justified by the blood of, of the Lamb. They no longer will be under condemnation. They belong to the Lord. They've been justified, they declared just, and he also glorified them. And of course, he's talking about eternity, when in the glory we'll see him face to face, but he's also speaking in our lives today as the glory of the Father. And Jesus said this on his prayer, that they, me, I gave them my glory. We're part of that. God is glorifying our lives. We will see the Lord. We have the blessings of the spiritual life. And we will show Christ to the others that are out there. And one of the things that, uh, uh, that I feel... I, I, I'm going to give an example to express how I feel and how I think we, we understand God's blessings. And how short we are. In, in really receive God's blessings, all right? I, I love Thanksgiving. I, I did not grow up celebrating Thanksgiving. Of course, I did not grow up in the United States. And when I came to, I, I saw it in the movies, in, in the commentaries, and then I came to the United States, and I understand it's a beautiful, big celebration. I love Thanksgiving. I, I love Thanksgiving. The, the turkey, the mashed potatoes, the corn, uh, the codfish, because we Portuguese, we put codfish in everything. And uh, so he has to be there too. And, and all of that things, uh, huh? the pumpkins I love pumpkins I'm crazy about pum pumpkin flavors I, I love it so we all this table like beautiful I think it's fantastic I think it's a great our first uh, um, celebration in the church not here when we first start was actually the Thanksgiving meal and I, I don't I don't I never I will never forget that that was that was fantastic and we, I think it's a great time in the year for us to celebrate the idea about Thanksgiving, that we give thanks to the Lord, a little bit of the American history. I think it's a great holiday. I love it. Um, and, and I love the food. Right? The food is fantastic. So I wanted to think about this. It's like a, the, big, the big table, right, with all this food. And I compare this with God's blessings, all kind of blessings that God gives us, spiritual blessings. The singing, the, pra the praising his name, the opportunity to go out and, and evangelize, to tell others about Jesus. There's all God's blessings. The comfort in our heart that we have eternal life. The, 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 the fact that we were saved. The, the, the fact that we can participate of the Lord's table and, and, and drink from the cup and, 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 and take the bread. All those blessings that come through salvation are so amazing. I compare to a Thanksgiving table, like a huge Thanksgiving table with all these things. Right? This is how I see it. And then in the corner of a table, it's somebody didn't have the time to cook the bread that I said the bread that I compared to our affliction that needs to be cooked inside before it jumps out, out of the oven. So think about it. Somebody put it. In. I'm going to give the, a little bit different example that I did in, in the Portuguese service. So think about it. The person did not have the time to cook the bread all the way and just brought, brought the bread the way it was to the table and put it on the corner. Right? And it's bread. But it's not even the best bread or, or, or something. And, and that is butter, right? Butter. Like the regular butter, the shop right butter. Not a good butter. Uh, the Walmart butter. Something like that. And you come around and you grab a, a little bit of piece of that bread. That was not even the best bread. It was just bread. And you put it butter. And you eat. And you say, wow, wow that was a great Thanksgiving meal. You skipped everything else. You just took that one and you feel like, oh, you have so much joy. And it was like, uh, what about everything else? What about the cranberry sauce? Don't you love cranberry sauce? Just, don't you, what, what about the corn? Uh, mashed potatoes? The sweet potatoes? Well, what about the pies? What, what about the codfish? It has to have codfish, right? And what about the picanha? Because it, 
for the brothers in Brazil or, or, or the French fries for our brother from France. And so, so what is that? All of that, what happened to everything else? And it's like, are you so happy about that little piece of bread? And I believe that a lot of times we act like that in our spiritual blessings. God is working on us, he's preparing us for something great, for us to go out and evangelize and be empowered by the Holy Spirit and do these crazy, crazy, fantastic things for the gospel and, you know, and talk to people. And we go like, oh, I am so blessed with this little thing. This hymn speaks so much to my heart and you feel like, oh, I'm so good. And what about everything else that God prepared for us? You think that's your Christian life? That, that little piece of bread? But that's how we, a lot of times, we lack on the understanding of what God prepared for us and how He's working all things for the good. The ones that have been called according to His purpose for the glorification of His name. God is working in you so you can show Christ in your life. Do you understand this? Please understand this. I love, I, I became so American, right, that we have so many American flags in my backyard. So around the gazebo, we have American flags, we have a huge American flag, and we don't even have a Portuguese flag. But I, we have all those, because I, I love the country that I'm in. Because we have Portuguese flag at home, but you know, because I, I, I love that. It represents the country that I live, that I love. And I, I the country that when my, when I, when my kids grew up, Right? That I have a leaving. So I love United States. It's, it's, I love the flag. Don't, 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 don't. Respect the flag in front of me because I will make you. Because this is, this is the country that I love. Amen? And you don't think different because you're here. Right? But this is a country. One nation under God. We hope that's true. We want it to be true. Not any God. Jesus Christ, the Lord of this country. That's what we want, right? But that's... It's just a country. We haven't been a country for many centuries, after all, the, compared, like, for example, to Portugal, or the countries in Europe. We haven't been for that long. But when you look to it, you love it, and you, you, you want the best for it. You want to represent, you represent your country, the country, with a flag. On the 4th of July, you even your plates and napkins probably have an American flag, right? On the flag day, you, I'm almost sure, you do something. And you think about this. We have the American flags uh, on, the, on, on the porch of the, the, our fellowship hall, right? We have uh, there, because we, on the front of the yard too, right? We put it for the, 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 uh, the holidays here, right? It goes from the flag day until until Labor Day, right? We celebrate, especially on the 4th of July. So we, we, we have those. We want to represent well this country, correct? We, all, we want our governors and, and our president to represent well this country. That's why we're so concerned about voting and all of those things. Now, understand this. You have been called by God before you were even born to represent the highest authority that ever exists, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. And you not even need a flag, but you need to be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. You need to understand that God is working all things for you to represent the highest authority that ever exists on this earth, which is kingdom never failed. Exists from ever to ever, from eternity to eternity, because he is God, he's the only God, and he's giving you the possibility, the opportunity to represent him on this earth. This is how great it is. So compare it to the United States, that as much as I love the United States, as much as I love the flag, it's, it's nothing compared to this great and wonderful power, which is the gospel of salvation that God is working in our lives together as a church and individually in each one of us. So we go out on the streets of Mount Clare and we are representing Jesus Christ. You go to your work, you represent Jesus Christ. You are in your neighborhood, you represent Jesus Christ. You are in your family, on a family reunion, you're representing Jesus. And for that, God is working all things, things that look good to you, look, things that look bad. 
Maybe right now you'll feel like the bread in the oven and you, wanna, you just want to jump out, but let it cook, let it cook. Because God's going to use you. Because all things are for the good. He works those things for the good. It doesn't mean all things are good. They are good on God's perspective. They may not be good on your eyes. But God is working. And he's preparing you to be more like Jesus. So you go out there, you tell people, and people can't see Christ in you. you may, they may reject you like they reject Christ, but they got to see it. It's not that you cannot see it. Do you, do you ever start a conversation and the person talk to you and say, oh, so you are this or that. Uh, I, I think it happened to you multiple times. You start a conversation people understand. And that's the way it should be. You should start a conversation with someone about, it doesn't matter what, and the people must say clear to you, you are a Christian, aren't you? Where do you get that from? It doesn't mean they're going to like it. But they will know. I love the t-shirts, right? Philadelphia Ministry. Do you notice we add Mount Glen, New Jersey? Because I'm, we have to, people need to stop asking me if we are in PA. Right? We always get that. Philadelphia Ministry. Oh, so you guys are in PA? So we add Mount Glen, New Jersey. But let me tell you, for you to show Christ, it's not a t-shirt that's going to show Christ. So a lot of you are going to return this t-shirt right after church, right? <laughs> right after service. The t-shirt doesn't represent Christ. You represent Christ. The t-shirt helps to promote the, 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 the church, the local church. And it's good. But representing Christ, oh, it's, that's another level. That's an eternal level. That's a glorified level. That's a lot more than we can put in words. I could be speaking the whole day, and you know I could. The whole day, and I still will not grasp the surface of what it means to be a Christian and represent the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how great it is. He is the only Savior. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He has the almighty power. He is the sovereign God. That he, and, we will be, and we will be with him forever. So he's working all things. So brother and sister, don't, 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 don't be afraid. Don't just be, don't be troubled. God is working all things for the good. Oh, something great is coming out after that. Something wonderful. God is preparing you for something wonderful. And don't, don't think I'm taking this very light, the way I'm saying because. I know what this means in my life. A lot of times in the oven, a lot of times I said, Lord, I, I think you overcooked this. This is definitely, it's going to smell like burn. It's too much cooked in here already. But it needs to stay a little more. It stays a little more. And sometimes things that comes to stay and we have to live with them and live with them. And God is preparing us for something greater. And next thing you know, you're preaching the gospel to someone and you are saying things that you did not plan, you did not prepare, and God is using you because he prepared you before. You don't even notice. And now you say, sharing the gospel, and people, where did you get this? May God help us to understand these words. May we live for his glory continuously. May we understand what, it is, what this verse means. So next time, I don't know if you have, do you have it at home? On, you probably do on a, on a wall or a, you have on a mug. The, the Bible verse, the first one. And we know all things work for the good. You probably have it somewhere, right? Maybe you have a t-shirt with it. I'm pretty sure next time you, you look to it, you will have a, a very different perspective from the perspective people who usually give it to it. Yes, he's working all things. He's working in all things for the good. And he's preparing you to use you more. It's so good to be a Christian, isn't it? It's so good. It's so good to know that in all things God is in control and he, whatever he's doing, he works. You don't have to worry about that. Right? You don't have to worry. He's working all things for the good. And you can trust him. Not only on this life, you can trust him for eternity. May God help us to understand this. May God work in our lives for the glory of his name let's pray together father we come before thee in the name of jesus and we are so thankful because you know all things in all things you are working for the good of of the ones that believe in you father help us lord to understand this and may your name be glorified not only today but forever we pray these things in jesus name 
Amen. To God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. You may be seated.